<laughs> Welcome, sir. Thanks for pulling the cart while I was under the weather, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It was all these guys. Um, but yeah, Coben, producer, writer, Dylan, producer, art director, Sean, director, editor. Mm -hmm. um, we got the whole crew here. Uh, feeling good. Today is going to be a uh, today's going to be a fun day. I think we might have an audio thing. Kevin, I don't know if you want to take a look at that. Um, but yeah, today we're excited because today we're talking about inspiration and yeah. we're talking about the things that have inspired us for both animation and uh, story. Yeah. And so this is going to be a cool, a cool, a cool episode, episode, I think. I think. Uh, we call, uh, it, we call it episode. I don't know. We call these <laughs> live stream. Uh, yeah, web episode. Um, We'll be answering questions at the end, so please feel free to leave questions or comment in the chat. Um, if this is your first time hearing about the series, we'd like to read you the, read you the log line, uh, and Coben does it better than anybody else. So, <laughs> Coben? He's the man. The Axiom Chronicles is an animated sci-fi action-adventure series about a teen boy named Rick <laughs> who is chosen by a cosmic power to save his people and the planet from an evil force of robots called the Mechno All right, so. <laughs> so <laughs> um, did I do it, guys? You did it. You did it. You did it. You did it. So, wow. like, we when people ask us, what is this like? You know, you do, like, it's this meets this meets this. You know, we typically say it's Prince of Egypt meets Star Wars meets The Matrix. That's kind of like the three most common mm -hmm. you know properties i think yeah that we can kind of compare it to. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so um but there's so much more mm -hmm. there's so many more things that we've been inspired by over the years and so much to like these characters and just the you know the meaningfulness of the story and we really want to kind of get into that today and share that with you yeah. um, to give you a, a deeper knowledge of of the axiom and kind of you know some of the why we did this and you know why it's meaningful to us um specifically this guy you know he always says it's his love letter to samurai oh yeah. yeah yes yes it is and so we'll <laughs> talk about that a little bit um i know for we in a lot of the comments that we get on social media and people that see this they always see, that's one of the very first comments that we see is like oh my gosh this looks a lot like samurai jack yeah. and i'm really excited about it which it's exciting for us that people yeah, get that you love know, it. right off the bat. So, <clears throat> um, you know, it's also, we kind of talk about it's a collection of the things we've always wanted to see in a show. <clears throat> I think last week we hit a little bit on Sean, you hit on this too. It's like, hey, you know, there's episodes that we'll watch on TV of a certain sh sh series or this or that. And we're like, oh, we wish it did this, did that. And and we're just kind of like, you know what? Kyle Cohen said like in the past too, it's like, let's just put all that effort into yeah. Axiom and take yeah. those ideas and put them. So that's, also a big part of this the inspiration on this in the show yeah um you know it's it's also the dream of creating something on our own you know mm -hmm. and i think for all of us we can collectively say you know that is the big dream for us is to like say this is a thing that we're creating together to you know that's outside of client work you know yeah. what i mean right. I think yeah. that's kind of the cool thing that i'm i'm excited about personally um because like this you know, I while the client work has like kept us going all these years, and we're so incredibly grateful for that. Like, this is a story that we get to tell. This is yeah. the 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 journey that we get to go down. Together. Honestly, like so, we don't have to answer to really anybody but ourselves in terms of like Angel, because it's like it almost becomes what do we think is cool? Yeah. Like, and, yeah. which is which is really and, really awesome. In like, addition to that, I mean, we get to hear from investors yep. too, who are you yep. guys um yeah. you know we love this we love these efforts like we'd love to see more of this you know what i mean like sure we would love to hear input on from you guys um as the investors uh should we go get go down that road right um you know that would be that would be amazing um which you know leads me to say go to angel.com slash uh, axiom hit it and hit that uh, express it. interest. Smash so, that thing. Smash that express interest. <laughs> anyway, for right now, let's uh, kick this whole thing off with the trailer. I don't know if we can. Can we roll that?
I know what you're thinking. This doesn't look like it's going to end well. And you know what? You might be right. But I've been through a lot worse. Well, maybe not this bad, but still pretty bad. My name is Rake. As a baby, the Mechnohive took me from my parents. I was raised in Power City by the cyborgs. They manipulated me into their own image, trained me as a weapon. They made me do terrible things. Eventually, I was ordered to gather organics to populate the Mechnohive's labor camps. Everything changed when I watched a driver bot tear a baby from its mother's arms and then turn its whip on her. Awakening a voice inside me I'd never heard before. That voice told me to defend them. All of them. In that moment, I broke every rule I was taught to obey. I knew the hive would come after me, so I ran. They hunted me, but I made it out. It's been a crazy ride to get to this point. I've made great friends, I found my family, and most importantly, I've been called to my true purpose. If you told the old me that it would be my job to free the organics and save the planet, I would have laughed in your face and probably arrested you. But now I know, it has always been my fate. playing like how long it felt <laughs> to watch that trailer again um so yeah it's cool to, always cool to see that okay. uh, play all the way through um as you guys can probably tell we are extremely passionate about the caxium chronicles and would love to make the show reality uh but we cannot do that without your support we have partnered with angel studios and we are gauging interest in this project right now so if this is a show that you would like to be made please express interest by going to angel.com forward slash axiom uh, this will allow us to see if people are interested in helping us fund the show if we were to go uh, open a crowdfund. Um, many films and series like The Chosen, The Wingfeather Saga, Sound of Freedom started this way. Uh, if we feel the time is right and the interest is there, then we'll open up a crowdfunding round where you can invest in the project and actually own equity and stock in the project. So express now and be the first one uh, to know if we are open for, for a crowdfund, which... Hopefully, we'll be soon. Yeah, yeah. yeah dude. Fingers yeah. crossed. Here we go. We need you guys. We need you. Yeah. Um, cool. I think uh, we can start diving into this thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, first and foremost, last week, we kind of asked a question of, you know, what shows did you guys watch as a kid? And we didn't really get around to that because we got a lot of other good, really good questions. But Sure, yeah. Um, maybe think about that as well because we'd love to hear from you guys what, what shows you loved growing up. For us... We're definitely going to talk about that today mm -hmm. and not just TV shows, but movies that inspired us and all this stuff. So, you know, and then same thing, like toys you played with, like what were your favorite toys? I mean, obviously we're, <laughs> we're kind of into that here too. A little bit. <laughs> um, a little bit. So yeah, let us know, Just maybe think about that a little bit and, uh, and we'll kind of go from there. So yeah. once yeah. we get to the question section, um, but for right now, let's talk about artwork and animation inspiration. And I'm going to hand this over 
to these guys, specifically sure. Dylan, to sure. talk about artwork probably first and foremost yeah. uh, as a creator of, of Axiom and sure. whatnot. So. Yeah, I mean, kind of like we hit last week a little bit. Um, we we were talking about Samurai Jack mostly. Uh, obviously, like we said, we get a lot of that everywhere we went, so what were you even hearing on our comments? And yeah, like I always say, it's my my it started anyways, my love letter to Samurai Jack to yeah, the kind of early 2000s television and cartoons and stuff like that, the style, the the action and I mean even yeah. the like cinematography, which is weird to say, but I mean there is like legit uh call outs and little like moments in again a cartoon network kids show that was either inspired by some like very iconic mm -hmm. like uh kurosawa yeah. sh stuff like that like these are like very you know almost snobby yeah. pretentious <laughs> directors i, I was a great clip when we were talking choice. about inspiration today <laughs> like i i was funny because i was like i i even was was thinking the way that we try to like move the camera mm. is very like Dennis Villeneuve, which I'm like, I'm like, do we sound pretentious? Yeah, is that ridiculous? But like, it's like, I think that there is a sense of like, just even what we try to accomplish in this animated series from the live action directors that we really, really uh, respect and, yeah. and love, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, so. And that, like, it just kind of shows like that mattered that was that that came across even to kids like they don't get it or they they get it they're not too it's not above them yeah, something you kind of yeah. champion a lot is like treat your audience treat your kids they're smarter than you think they yeah, are you know some yeah, television yeah. where it just like well i mean the rules of composition are there uh, they they weren't invented by a person they were invented by by nature and, yeah you sure. know what i mean so you know composition is about keeping the eye moving sure and, you know even even in a still picture or a photograph mm -hmm. your eye is moving and a bad composition finds a corner for your eye to die in <laughs> but, you know and all all these cats who made these great cartoons that we love they went to art school yeah they, right they had to study yeah. that stuff yeah. right and it, and it shows and they went to film school and and the difference between a moving picture and a still picture it's just that it's moving. Yeah. It still yeah. has to yeah. conform to the rules of composition. Yeah. So I, I, I always Samurai Jack is a is a master class in composition. Yeah. yeah. In Agreed. Visual composition. Agreed. Yep. Yeah. Um. I'm. So I'm on the list too. I mean, the Ninja Turtles. Yeah. I mean, very all the various, uh, various versions, versions of it. You yeah. know, they all bring something to the table. Yeah, and they fight robots. Too. They fight so, yeah. robots. <laughs> they had to make that show. I think I you kind of hit I that last it. time. <laughs> to make it work kids. right maybe um, they yeah i don't know did they s spawn that no there was transformers there were other yeah, things that yeah. were fighting robots long before the turtles oh sure <laughs> i mean uh, you know, gi joe's yeah you can't shoot other people yeah exactly on television in the 80s you couldn't shoot people right so but you couldn't shoot robots because they weren't real that's right which uh it also is an inspiration in big time something we talk about all the time it's like you know how can we how can we get away with with <laughs> chopping people to bits? Right, like, make them robots. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, hey, uh, do we have any uh, turtles clips? I don't know if we there? do. I don't, honestly, but, yeah. Like, specifically, so no turtle clips, but specifically Rise. If you guys have a chance to yeah. check out Turtle Rise, um, which is on, I believe it's on Netflix, but the, the movie's on the Netflix. New movie, I yeah. think the first season. The pretty season yeah, for sure. Too, but um, yeah, yeah, that's really was good. essentially. Uh, produced by Andy Serrano, right? Yeah, sure. Who who is a guy who worked on uh, uh, Samurai Jack and Clone Wars? Yeah. And yeah. you know, All the it's funny it, yeah. whether you know these names or not. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, I mean, for us, we we are drawn to the work they do yeah. because right. because because it's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> there's a there's there's like a paper trail. You know, you can see like, oh, oh, he's of course he's in that, or of course, yeah. so and so did this. So, like, you can see the movement, or you can see their character design, or yeah, yeah you know, things yeah. like that. Yeah. Well, and the guy, the guy who storyboarded all of Samurai right. Jack, well, most of Samurai Jack, right? Uh, namely, he was in charge of 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 really storyboarding the 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 sword fighting yeah, yeah, but he went on to, to storyboard iron man and all of the marvel movies yeah, up right. to a certain point point. <laughs> right. and it's funny for me i'm so familiar with watching what he did with samurai jack 
that he I look at the Marvel fights and go, oh, that's so him. Yeah. You know? yeah. There's there's certain things that are just so yeah. like I could see Jack doing that. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I, for me, I think like Samurai Jack and Star Wars Clone Wars. Yeah. Which I think we do have some clips of that. Yeah. If we Should have some of those years. clips. It's, it's amazing. Um, <clears throat> it's and it's it's not. Um, that's the, the the. This is the fight we always yeah, we always talk about yeah. the specific talk fight. Yeah. And this was on Cartoon Network early 2000 yeah 2003 mm-hmm. um and so for me this is kind of this particular show and samurai jack are the two ones that are near and dear to me personally because mm-hmm. it connects me to all three of these guys sure um in in various ways like when i first met sean his dream was to uh to do something like a uh, genny tartakovsky <laughs> show which is samurai jack and, and star wars Palmer. yeah and then i met this guy and, <laughs> and i found out that his brother Paul was an artist on Clone Wars and Samurai, and Samurai Jack. Samurai <laughs> Jack. Yeah. drew these characters. And right. so, and then I met this guy <laughs> and like, I saw his he artwork grew up on it. and yeah. he grew up on it. And yeah. he was like, basically emulating a lot of these styles yeah. on his own and it made it his own though too, which is really right. cool. Mm-hmm. Like taking inspiration from Paul and mm-hmm. from Gandhi and from all these different Andy, inspirations yeah. and mm-hmm. creating his own version of that, which in a lot of ways, is action chronicles. You know? yeah. So yeah. you will unabashedly <laughs> yeah. say, 100%. Yeah, yes, I, I'm it's, very it's, inspired by those. I don't, I mean, it, I personally have always found inspiration in this idea that I met this kid. We, we were, you were a kid then. You're not now. <laughs> yeah, sure. uh, but I met this kid and I'm looking at his drawings and I'm like, talking, you know, what? what's your favorite shows and blah, blah, blah. And he's naming all these shows that my brother drew, Yeah, yeah. you know, and I'm like, well, I'm not the draftsman that he is, my brother, <laughs> or, nor am I the draftsman that you are, <laughs> yeah, true. but I feel a connection to those sure. things, you yeah. know? And so when we started to talk about what could Axiom be and what should it look like and how can we, it just became, for me personally, it just became a comfort zone. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, I, I've already say in nature, ar- artistically, I've, I've been in the peripheral of this world for a long time. Yeah. And so, so, I, and, and he was, Dylan's even like, do you think it's lame if we, if we go hard <laughs> and try to, to, you know, bite some of these styles? I said, no, it's beautiful. It's wonderful. Yeah. I mean, it's a natural progression of all things, yeah. you know, everyone is influenced by the thing before them. And then that shows in their work yeah. and that i'm not going to stop you no <laughs> and the hope is you're gonna you can elevate and you can work and like you said bring something a little bit new to it yeah. you know obviously yeah. which i think yeah a thousand percent yeah, yeah. And that's the goal that's that is the true goal of you know as far as the art goes with and, this is, and i think yeah. it's cool because we're like we're also i say we're <laughs> barely guys are pulling from other inspirations mm. like more recent inspirations like kung fu panda yeah i think we have an example of that there's sure. some great action um in that. like the action in that the backgrounds i remember specifically oh, the, the backgrounds in that dream sequence from the is it the third or the uh, second one i think the well it's the dream sequence of the first one is super stylized and yeah. looks very yeah. axiom mm-hmm. in the colors and then there's like the actual the third one that you're thinking of i think it, yeah with it has, the bowl, right yeah the bowl Dude, and has so all the, cool. the backgrounds <laughs> wild and yeah. like they're in another realm and everything's floating and it's yeah it's yeah amazing yeah um and, and i oh, think like yeah. just the, the vibrancy of the color yeah i remember us having a conversation because like um we had kind of established this look that was definitely more muted and neutral colors yeah the mm-hmm. palette was definitely more more neutral and then this the second pass at it this vibrancy came out and it was like we all agreed like this is i mean i think it was the kung fu panda art book that yeah, really yeah, pushed yeah. you yeah, yeah. I got to, the third to play one. to get more colorful <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then of course into the spider verse dude then they hit it to like 11. yeah yeah, yeah. With that. Way up. yeah. Mm-hmm. on Which, top of if there's any clips action. of that we should show that yeah. because i mean i think for for all of us here that was such a man uh, just a jaw-dropping experience to, to like go to that film and be like what is this yeah thing? Like, i mean what yeah. are they doing it definitely yeah. proved animation can be something way more than just silly cartoons yeah. Yeah. Definitely, it was for a champion a, that, for so. the american audience yes. yeah specifically yeah, because in a lot of other europe gets it <laughs> europe japan a right. lot of other countries japan. they they've never not thought it to be an art form right. and yeah. and are a viable art form or something that's not just for kids sure i, and, I mean I, yeah and i think like when we get to story on this thing too, like yeah. 
Spider Verse is so powerful because it's such a good story. Oh man. yeah, and it's such a it's it just pulls you in and yeah. and uh, I don't know I think for me it's it's both and for that as well. I oh, mean yeah. obviously these other shows as well, Samurai sure. Jack and Clone Wars yeah. are also amazing stories. I think um, I think with before Spider Verse and not that there weren't like little nuggets before that, but it was it was very much when it when it came to 3D it was almost trying to get to as realistic as you possibly could get. Yeah. But then Spider-Verse came out and it was this <laughs> mixture of like get real graphic. Get, get real graphic <laughs> but yeah. real at the exact same time. And there was this amazing mixture. And I think it kind of made everybody like kind of stop and be like, wait, what? Because oh, yeah. and you can see the ripples. <laughs> yeah. Even mm-hmm. in like oh, yeah. the new turtles. Yeah, the new turtles. Yeah. The new turtles, but even like the 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 uh the cat. The, what's uh, the, yeah, Puss in Boots. Puss in Boots. Yeah. Yeah. You, you yeah, just completely one. see these ripple effects that this this amazing movie had and mm-hmm. will probably continue to have oh, yeah. in the next few years. And I think we definitely were completely inspired by Into the Spider-Verse. Yeah, Not just even in visuals storytelling, but just storytelling Some in character, general. Character yeah, work. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was amazing. I, I mean, what I love about like all these movies is that like – my, I'm, I'd be able to expose my kids to this stuff, you know? Mm-hmm. Sure. Um, that's a shameless call out to my kids, too, by the way. So I yeah, tell yeah. them, I, I, I call out. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, bully kids. But, but yeah, the hey, bully bully kids. Kids. That's a good point here. <laughs> I think, like, um, you know, like showing my kids these these awesome cartoons that have not just amazing, st- like, artwork mm-hmm. and animation, but story, too. I think mm-hmm. that's really, really cool. I was, I was, you know, you were out of town while we were talking just about tonight and stuff and i was telling the guys i had watched a trailer for like four or five upcoming animated Mm. um shows that were coming out on on netflix recently none of them are geared towards kids (laughs) they are all just absolutely bloody and gory oh, no, and like it's just it, it, it's, it's crazy they're but they're all animated, animated. Yeah. all yeah. animated yeah. and it's just like there is nothing in terms of like epic storytelling mm. that i feel comfortable sitting around the tv with my children and watching yeah. for a show yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, for a show. these movies well, yes are, these movies are, are great you know, but like, like as an as an so animated series between. it's it's thing. crazy like you really have to like but like I was like, oh man, like these animated shows look really cool, and like I want to watch them, but I'm not gonna let my kids watch them. Sure. It's, it's crazy. And but the Action Chronicles <laughs> is one of those shows. Well, remember this afternoon we By talked about down. we were talking about Transformers Beast Wars and Transformers yep. Beast Machines, and they were they were at the the very fledgling stages of 3d animation yeah. and looking back at them now you look at the animation and you think oh that's <laughs> it's awful it's, yeah. but the story no disc mainframe you guys were pioneers yeah. but yeah, sure. but what held those shows together were the stories yeah. and i watched those came out i was already an adult and i'm <laughs> admittedly a transformers super fan yeah <laughs> so uh I watched those as an adult, and there were these themes in those stories yeah. that were way above a nine-year-old's head. Yeah, yeah. But but it didn't matter. Yeah. And it was subject matter that should be and 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 it should be presented yeah. to children, even if they don't get it literally. Yep. They they it's their concepts that they can they can wrap their heads around. Yeah. And I think that's one thing, I personally in the story of of axiom i think we all agree on this that we want to put themes in there that they're not so heavy that a kid's just going to shut down right but they're they're heady enough to where after when the show's over maybe they're going to think about that yeah, yeah. they're yeah. going to think about you know how rake dealt with this situation and 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 how his world is affected by his decisions and, and you know i think like repeat viewing yeah. like that's how yeah, i can. as like as a viewer always kind of like scale the things that i like mm-hmm. if like mm-hmm. if i watch something i'm like it was good but i'll never watch it again do i really like that thing sure. mm-hmm. like i i the things that i truly love are the things that i will watch over and <laughs> over and over and then see something 
that I didn't see the first time. Right, right. Like the Lord of the Rings trilogy, especially when you watch the extended versions. Yeah. The like, only way to watch. The only way to watch. <laughs> there are so many things that you're just like, I didn't notice that the first time. Mm-hmm. Just that little, even if it's like something with a character or for something with an action, there's just always do things to pick up. And I think we have always kind of been in that that mindset of like, we want the Axiom Chronicles to be that thing that you watch once through, but you come back and you watch it mm-hmm. again and you see things that you didn't see the first time. No. You know, you know, yeah, I wasn't here last last week, but I was watching. <laughs> and then the very last question that came in was exactly that. Like, what are you going to do to make the Axiom, legacy, right? the, the legacy yeah, of Axiom? And and I, I, will, I will say, I was at home like, ooh, I want to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> But, but I think you just did, Sean. That's yeah. what, when we talk about this, like, what are little seeds we can leave in here that people might not notice the first yeah. time, but yeah. on the second time, they'll pick up on it. Or, you know, Rake may come to a conclusion about a situation, and in the moment, you're taking it for granted because yeah. it's, just, it's just time. But when you go back, you can see that different things affected him in a way to get him there. Yeah. And and we're... We, we're being very careful to plant those kinds of things yeah. in here yeah. so that there, if you do watch it again, there's good reason yeah. and yeah. you, you, you're getting something new that you didn't get the first time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, so. right. That's awesome. Good answer, Sean. Dude. <laughs> I mean, that was beautiful. Um, we can keep talking about more inspirations. I mean, I think another thing we bring up a lot is Tron. Sure. Yeah. Um, the various. Yeah. Versions of it, various yeah. versions of it, specifically the animated one. Yeah, the animated that one series is, visually, is amazing. Yeah, it's very I mean, cool. That one was really cool too. Um, I think I think a lot of these are good examples. Of, I mean, Axiom is about man versus machine. Yeah. it's about nature versus mechanical, and Tron is that. Um, yeah. the, a lot of uh, you know the Matrix is kind of that. Sure. Um, that. I'm drawing a blank at the moment, but we had a good list of, of, yeah. of Princess Mononoke. Yeah. Is, Princess, Mon- is, Princess I mean, Mononoke was an amazing yeah. one that you came up with yeah. that I was yeah. like, Cold. geez, that's so great. Yes, but it, it is. It, it, that story is about the 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 overtaking of the natural world, yeah. the spiritual world yeah. by 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 the ambition of man. Yeah. Right? yeah. You know, yeah. and 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 this Nature that's our of, story too. Yeah, nature yeah. a little bit. Fighting you know? back a little bit. Yeah. yeah. And I think we could we could we'd be we can gush. thrilled to tell that story <laughs> if if oh you went to what? Angel what? Right, what? dot com forward slash axiom <laughs> and you expressed interest. If you're interested in hearing an epic tale about man versus machine, about go. nature versus mechanics. Rubits. Smash that express interest button. <laughs> yeah. Do it now. That's right. That's right. Um, okay, so let's. I, anything else you want to talk about in art? Well, yeah, I mean, those are those I mean, are definitely I, the big pillars. I think. Yeah, I mean, so. just just to. I think. Um, I love the comments of this. Reminds me of Samurai Jack, mm-hmm. and I and I hope that those people are. It's not trolling but i think that no, the thing legitimately that, happy yeah, I, think yeah. That, Seriously, I, I read every comment <laughs> i think the thing that i love is it's, it's it's bridging that gap of of not being just a complete and utter copy yeah. and just being inspired by it right. which i think is is support yeah it's which important. is which is i think every great artist wants like they want their art to inspire people and i think as gendy tartakovsky and and paul rudish i think that they've inspired a generation of young artists to emulate but go beyond what they did and i think dylan has definitely accomplished that i don't i don't look at this i don't look at i don't look at rake and be like that just looks like samurai jack but you know a thinner version (laughs) but like i i think it's just he's taken what these guys have done and he's he's been inspired by it Mm -hmm. which i think is every artist's dream yeah yeah i agree so all right. Yeah. And yeah. segue into uh, some story. In the story. Um, so, some of the pillars that we built this on is having real good guys yep. and real bad guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that um, for us telling that hero's journey, like The Hobbit, mm-hmm. Lord of the Rings, My Star favorite. Wars, and then well, I, I, you got to say it because I, I was like, what Thundercats? Thundercats. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so like, 
<laughs> well, we put that know, in that list, which is amazing. I love yeah, that. Yeah. I was thinking. I was specifically thinking about stories about chosen ones. Yeah. That mm-hmm. that um, or faded faded ones, uh, who whether they know it or not, are are their destiny. Their role is to is to save the day, is to save the world. Yeah. And um, I was thinking back to what what shows really you know, inspired me when I was a kid and Thundercats was one of them. Lion-O, lion is a reluctant kid in the beginning, mm-hmm. but, you know, then he's given this power and, and, and he's the only one who can handle the power yeah. and, and he succeeds. Yeah, he, right. <laughs> yeah, he, which is, I mean, it's, I, the more I thought about it, I was like, you're totally right. It's yeah. true. Yeah. <laughs> which, yeah. Honestly, it's obscure. Compared, yeah. This is what makes you such a great creator, Tobin, is the fact that you're able to pull from these, Obscurity, well, so obscurity. <laughs> obscurity yeah. Yeah. but connect yeah. the pieces and say like even today i was thinking about indiana jones and i was like i threw out thrown out there i was like yeah because you know we have the scene and and the word he does like the like, yeah, an homage does, to like the, the uh, idol switch, switch. Mm-hmm. and you're like yeah but also it's a story about you know oh, yeah. the nazis and you know i don't yeah. know it's bringing all these parallels and i'm like it's the, the, it's, the, like, oh, it's, the it's the the most evil thing earth has ever seen the yeah. nazis yeah. traveling yeah. around trying to gather up all these spiritual relics yeah. to right. use them for their evil will yeah, like, yeah. i mean the mechno hive is <laughs> trying to gather up <laughs> right i didn't even think of that I love it. Yeah. you know what i mean but some of true. these inspirations yeah. are so like uh, subconscious sometimes yeah. you know and it's it's but they're they're the crazy thing is that they're themes that have been around for forever. Yeah, you know, and everybody turns to them. Star Wars is no is 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 <laughs> yeah. You know, they we all know now that George Lucas pulled from all these classic tales. Yeah. He even pulled from Lord of the Rings. Yeah, right? you know, and um, and there's no there's no crime in that. There's no, no harm in that. You know, there's because they're. They're beautiful stories about beautiful heroes, mm-hmm. you know, and 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 they resonate with us because they they inspire us all. They don't right. just inspire the creators and the artists, yeah. but they they inspire I, the viewers and the readers. Yeah. So, yeah. And I, I, I going back to like the hero's journey, like with Axiom from the get go, it it's kind of always been this sweeping epic, yeah, right? It's never it hasn't been, been this small. monster of the week kind of a thing. No. Mm-hmm. We have stories like that. Yeah by the way, <laughs> but not this one. Um, this one is a, it's a, it's an epic story. Yeah. And I think like, again, it's about exposing our kids to that and exposing our kids to this, the long play, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And season one is a story in and of itself and it's all buttoned up, but yeah. there's more to that story. Oh, you know? yeah. There's three seasons at least on this thing. And so, yeah. um, you know, which, Go to <laughs> go ahead, yeah. Axiom or Angel.com forward slash Axiom yeah. to uh, express interest. Express interest. Get that ball rolling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Get that ball rolling. Um, but we also we also want to talk about the bad guys. I think we have to talk about the bad guys. Yeah, because yeah. there's no hero I, without. Yeah. You know the it's I was I was thinking about it and the hero stuff. I feel like it it kind of just comes easy. It comes natural. Yeah. yeah. We all we all have our expectations of a hero and that's fine. Yeah. But what makes the heroes journey incredible is unbeatable odds yeah. Yeah. and and um you know I, i've spent a lot of time thinking about the mechno hive and how why and why and how do they why do they do what they do and how yeah. do they do it yeah, yeah. and i you know the, on the surface it's easy to to compare these two because the mechno hive is a hive mind they they are they are millions but they are one mm-hmm. and of, of course, I'm a huge Star Trek Next Generation fan, and <laughs> everybody knows who the Borg yeah, are. Man. You know, yeah. but the, and the Matrix is the same kind yes. of bad guy. Yeah. It's the same same odds and, as well. And it's that you you fight them and you fight them and they never stop coming. Yeah, you know, there there's always more. There's always more, and they all have one singular objective. Yeah, you know, and so when you know when in the time. Whenever I'm thinking about the Mechno Hive, I'm thinking about Matrix and I'm thinking about Alien, you know, the brood of, of, yeah. of Xenomorphs. And uh, Battlestar Galactica is a huge one, uh, more so the, the, the reboot of Battlestar, Gal- yeah. uh, Battlestar Galactica, where, where the machines are indistinguishable from us. Yeah. And, and I mean, our, the Mechno Hive yeah, is yeah. distinguishable. Yeah. Yeah. But, but just this idea, again, of... Um, an artificial life form 
trying their hardest to uh, be what their creators were. Yeah. And, um, but then ultimately failing because they take it too far. Yeah. Sure. And, and you know that's, what's, you know what's, what's always something. great about a villain that's like evil and almost like pure evil is there's that small percentage that like their plan and like their ultimate goal kind of makes sense to yeah. you. Like yes, Thanos. That's a good, yeah, I knew like, you were going to say like that. Thanos is like, you kind of like listen to him and you're kind of like, that's horrible. Mm, that's horrible, is... but it kind of makes sense. Yeah. Like you yeah. should probably eliminate half of the population of the universe <laughs> so everybody else can like eat and be Flourish. okay. Yeah. And so I think that there's always that sense that like making them evil, but kind of making their plan somewhat makes sense but it's still very evil. Yeah, still mm. twisted. Yeah, it's still very twisted, and like yeah. you should probably put a stop to it. But yeah. Yeah. like it kind of like like the Joker in the Dark Knight. You're like, man, you should maybe bring a little bit of anarchy to Gotham. Like <laughs> that sounds like a great idea. Like that's like you know sort of thing. Like everybody seems so like you know buttoned up, complacent. But, yeah, Just shake yeah, it up. But, yeah. but Thanos, he was like, that's what I loved about that guy, and yeah. that's what like the Marvel leading up to him was when he was kind of like he felt so educated and mm. felt so like I know what I'm talking about that you kind of there's a, a moment in in Infinity Wars and Endgame where you're like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah oh no 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 like yeah, no, 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 that's yeah, bad, bad. Like, like, yeah. so, there's a like, there's a cool theme hidden in there too is that like it, the Borg are the same way yeah. um, individuality is a weakness yeah you know and and Ray he doesn't even actually know who he is yet yeah you know and and he he is an individual and he's going to find that out you know he's going to find out who he is and what makes him unique and special just like everybody else is unique and special yeah you know? yeah. Yeah. yeah he's so, going from being told what he is to the, the the open expanse of you know he gets out of what his situation is with the hive in the very beginning yeah uh, yeah we, i love, always love saying this where we kind of start him you know our it's our um commentary on the anti-hero he kind of starts out as that anti-hero yeah. and then gets quickly jettisoned out of that life yeah. mm -hmm. and whatever comes after him you know that he it's up to him now like you're saying to yeah. figure out, okay well what do i do now i've never been here before yeah. i've literally never been where in the robotic lands this far out anyways mm -hmm. what do i do you know and uh, i've never been free before yeah. right yeah. yeah right so that's always you know as a as as yeah, a character story for Rake, anyways. That's always a really fun, um, yeah, thing to play with and, yeah, you know, yeah. explore. Because you're kind of, as the audience, you get to explore this world with the main character. It's not like he knows what's going on either. So that's always, for me, when I come into yeah. a movie or a yeah. TV series mm -hmm. and you're watching, like, Spider-Verse, for example, like... Miles Morales, he starts out as a failure, and the whole movie, he's just trying to be a be Spider Man, yeah. Yeah. and he fails, and yeah. he fails, and he fails, and he fails. And the very last part when he he does it, he shows everyone that he can be mm -hmm. Spider Man, yeah. a yeah. hero, and like that is, I mean, that's why that story is so good. Yeah, and like that's, that's what I want, you know, with Rake. That is his you know, the same goal. We get to do that with Rake. We get to go through the trials mm -hmm. that he's gonna face. And if you'd like to see Rake go through these trials, <laughs> there it is. go to angel.com forward slash axiom and please express interest. That's right. If this sounds interesting to you. Yeah. Wonderful um, Yeah. I mean, we talked about Prince of Egypt parallels last week. Um, yeah. It's pretty obvious, I think. With, <laughs> you know, yeah. A lot of people, I think on social media too, were like, yeah, this is. We see it. Yeah. This yeah. is Moses. With robots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, which is a cool, yeah, you know, whatever. One hundred percent interesting we, hook to me. I mean, again, I am not going to shy away from from like comparisons with Prince yeah. of Egypt. No, I, that movie's that a... movie's amazing. Well, I think that there's something there's something a little bit more interesting than like um, a hero's journey where it's like you're the you're the one, and then it's mm -hmm. like I totally am the one, and then yeah. you go on from there. Like I think that there's like the reluctant hero yeah. that's way more interesting in terms of like Moses being like, no, no, this no, 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 no. Terrifying. Like, yeah, this is, this sounds like an awful idea, but even like Dune sure. and, and even uh, the matrix, like yeah. you have these people who are like, you're, like, no, you're, you're the one. yeah, you're it. And they're like, no, I'm not. And, <laughs> yeah. and, which like, to me, like, 
just makes it mo- all that more relatable to kids and even people watching where yeah. you have this this task that seems so like impossible yeah. to achieve mm-hmm. but finding it within yourself to do that thing and overcome fears and 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 just your you know your reluctancy to do it yeah to do what is right even if it seems yeah. like completely impossible yeah. Yeah. i feel like that that kind of hero is the realistic hero yes too. yes i don't yeah. think there's many people who are like oh, i'm just gonna do that yeah, yeah. 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 right into yeah. this yeah. So yeah. Heroes, go and do he, this heroes are always born of of horrific uh situations yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Never, thrown you know, into something terrible it's just, it's just the 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 right the right person has the right heart to do yeah. the right thing i mean right? I, you know? as much right. as I, I love Star Wars and I love Luke Skywalker, but mm-hmm. I feel like there was always a sense of like he he wanted to be that, like sure. he wanted mm-hmm. to be a Jedi, like it was it, he was he was wanting to leave Uncle Owens and go mm-hmm. get power converters, or, like, <laughs> like that. yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> but like to feel that sense of like, dude, you're you're it, and and for that that hero to be like, no, 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 yeah, but still overcome that, yeah. and go do it. I feel like is is more relatable and is like I think kids can see themselves more in that. I'll one hundred percent guarantee you that most of these stories of chosen, re- reluctant yet chosen heroes. Yeah. Whoever wrote those totally read the yeah. Moses story. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure. Or turned for to sure. it for inspiration. Yeah, yeah. at least for sure. At least. Um, I mean, I wait. I have a whole list of other cartoons <laughs> and movies that we've and a lot of these we've named over this you know, this session so far, but, you know, I think for us also, the eighties cartoons always, almost always ended with like, like, this is what this episode was about. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you knowing's know, half the battle. Knowing's half the battle. Yeah, that's right. Folks. Um, Axiom Chronicles won't do that, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> but there will be some strong like values that will, yeah. will, will, will be very apparent and, yeah, we're gonna weave those into the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We don't need to, we're not gonna at the end remind kids not to play with electrical yeah. cables. You know? <laughs> yeah. Although maybe we should. I don't know. But, I don't know. but yeah. you know. leave, you leave your comments in the. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Would you like PSAs at the end of each episode? <laughs> if so, go to <laughs> angel.com <laughs> forward slash axiom. Yeah. So I, mean, the, but these, I mean, these are the shows. These are the movies that like formed who we are yeah mm-hmm. well, you know like the list is on here like star wars and tron and terminator and flash gordon dark crystal star trek dune indiana jones that's just a very 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 short list but yeah those ones specifically kind of you know lean into yeah this this concept yeah um you know, you had Thunder the Barbarian, which I love. Yeah, yeah. that was more of a style so, thing. Yeah. yeah, that was more so than story. That was but style. Still, Just yeah. that simplistic two D style that I think yeah. I, I can speak honestly that yeah. many of the things in Samurai Jack were inspired Dude, by yeah, the same percent. ideas yeah, of yeah. old Hanna Barbera cartoons, yeah, like yeah. the Herculoids. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> One of my faves. <laughs> Um, I, I, I want to push for sure. Uh, last or Avatar: Last Airbender as yes. well. Oh, dude! We we're kind of talking earlier in the office. Yeah. That is that cartoon is like I think a wonderful example of how well or how successful a huge story, a huge epic, as we like to say, yeah. mm-hmm. can be. Can be for kids. Can be endearing. You can watch it for I think it's three seasons, I believe, and it's a sprawling and spinoffs. Too, yeah. and spin-offs. But this this sprawling story that you it's yeah it's no monster of the week it is you see the trials you see the tribulations yeah. you see the character growth you see yeah them start out as one thing and end out you know an enti- entirely different thing and that that's both heroes and villains yeah. in that show yeah, yeah. And that's something one hundred percent we have an axiom for it's sure. an epic scale of yes. the show in terms of like this is who this person is but this is the growth that you need to become to be actually become the avatar right like i, I like it is it's He's, it's one of the first shows and like nickelodeon for right? them to take a chance on yeah. something like that mm-hmm. right it's not in their wheelhouse was crazy yeah. i think it it came out of nowhere and i think it surprised everybody and now like obviously they're doing movies right. and like yeah, they have a whole, you know, yeah right, like, right it's insane to me and i i that like when we talk about axiom avatar is definitely like always there because of the scale of like yeah. it isn't just like 
the monster of the week or no. the bad guy of the week. There is this big story mm-hmm. that we are trying to tell. Yeah. And yes, there'll be like little episodes yeah, like that. Fun. But mm-hmm. but I think in terms of like growth and Rake figuring out who he is and who he needs to be and, and, and what that journey looks like, I don't think that there's any better like representation other than Avatar. Right. Like it's an amazing yeah. example. I think, yeah, it, at least in a kid's cartoon. Cause I mean, yeah. Lord of the Rings is another huge thing we all love. It is that as well. Mm-hmm. It is that mm-hmm. huge. But it is not a kid's cartoon. It is not a kid's no, cartoon. No, 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 no. <laughs> but the, <laughs> the thing that, scary. yeah, I love about, yeah, Avatar is that. It is a, they did it. They took a chance. They said, kids can do this. Kids yeah, can mm-hmm. stick it out. They can pay attention. They mm-hmm. can watch this and follow along from episode to episode. And, yeah. and actually well, do that. And you mentioned Dragon Ball Z, too. Dragon Ball Z is a huge one. Yeah. That one's a little less... Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, <enough. happening. laughs> it's, a, it's an amazing story as well, but it is, you know, it's a lot of screaming and powering up. Yeah. yeah. I'm <laughs> not convinced. It's going to be in our show, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you go to... <laughs> what? Screaming and powering up. Forward slash axiom. <laughs> but I think even, even Aang... Just going back to to Avatar, just yeah. like doubting himself. Yeah, he's a reluctant hero. He's like for sure. completely a reluctant hero, which like I, I am always a proponent of. Like I just yeah. think that there's something way more relatable to that, because I think that there are probably I think it's a a very specific personality type. Yeah. I think there are very few people that would just jump into that and not have reluctancy. But I feel like a vast majority of people you know, when they're called to a greater task would probably take pause and think like, <laughs> I'm afraid. I, yeah, can I, can I do this? Like, I am afraid. Which I think is, is very relatable. And yeah. I, I, um, and Rake is that like, I mean, he is just trying to find out who he is. Like he is, he's lost. I think in one moment he, he thinks he knows who he is. Yeah. In the beginning. We, and, yeah. and, and he's shown really what he's been doing and what the Mechno Hive is. And he's, and he really doesn't want a part of it, but then what is he left with? Yeah, how do you leave a hive mind yes. of robots that mm-hmm. are how do you kill you if you try? Even leave. if you even <laughs> if you find out that it's completely wrong, how do you leave yeah. what you've always known? Sure. Mm-hmm. And start your own journey. And what does that look like? So like I I really love discovering Rake's journey with him a lot like mm-hmm. as an audience member. Right. Which is you walk I, alongside him. Yeah, of, which yeah. is always like what you want as as a viewer. Yeah. yeah, is you want to be along for the ride. You want to be discovering things with your hero. Mm. Like, yes, this this is good. This is bad. I don't know how I feel about this. Sure. You know. Sure. Yeah. I think you're about to be like, I don't really see the deep, the Dragon Ball Z thing. No, no, no. What I was gonna say about Dragon Ball Z is, I whereas Avatar, I feel like they had an from the beginning, they had an end game. Yeah. They yeah. had an end in sight. Yeah. yeah. Dragon I don't Ball Z is I'm very convinced Dragon Ball Z. It's like, <laughs> eh, we'll figure it out when we get there. I was, <laughs> the one thing for Dragon Ball Z, yeah, I will it say, is, it's, it is it's all about, it's all about bettering yourself, training, and, and, mm. and getting mm. to a higher level. That's I mean, good. in a very condensed way of putting it. And that's something that, as a kid, when I watched it, I was like, I can, if I work at it, if I train, I love that. Mm-hmm. If I train like Goku, yeah, I could, you know, I could do this too. If I draw I could, all day, I just I, literally I maybe I can make a cartoon. That's, I, literally, <laughs> that's what I thought. I was like, cool. if I, in my version of training, I'm going to draw every so it day. So may not have inspired our show directly, yeah. but yeah. It inspired yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. I just yeah. imagine it's inspiration. Little yeah. Dylan out in in I, I yeah. definitely play Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, yeah. 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 I charged him in his in his in rural Nebraska. People on the highway saw me. I mean, make that dream a reality by yes. going to ax by angel. I keep going to axiom.com. Angel.com forward slash axiom. Express interest. Do it. Uh, Do it now. And help Dylan look his set out his childhood dream. Yeah, that's right. Help Dylan become Goku. Yeah, yeah. Please, Goku. please become Goku. It's uh, it's seven fifty. Do yeah, we have any questions? Yeah, like we gotta we gotta wrap so this up. It, yeah. So let's. Uh, Throw out any questions you may have. Does anybody listening or we also anybody feel Mom, free to any questions? throw yeah. out uh, what your favorite shows were as a yes. kid? Oh, look at this. Carlos. Carlos. Looking good. Oh. Oh, oh. Well, well, environment leader. Tundra's cave. Oh, 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 yes. Well, I can only see half. There, there we go. go. There's a question. Season There's a question. question. Yes. yes. Oh, dude. Yes. You have well, no idea, wow. Carlos. Can we, can, we, can we talk about 
the state of Dude, just talk Zedin. about it. I we, mean, we kind of so... hit on it, the whole video game aspect, remember? The we one? did, yeah, the yeah. first one. But Zedin, Zedin was once a, a whole planet. Mm -hmm. And then when the Mechno Hive the took it over, yeah. they, they, they uh, ravaged it of all of its natural resources, causing the planet to crack into pieces. Mm -hmm. Literally fractured. But the Mechno Hive didn't want those pieces to go away because those pieces contained more pieces of the axiom crystal so they mechanically tethered these huge chunks of planet together and at the center is this mechanical core that holds these tethers that hold zedon together <laughs> and on each of those nodes as we call them the yeah. planetary nodes uh is a different ecosystem yeah uh and and here's just a little teaser of 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 one of them we call the jungle zone yeah <laughs> yeah. So, 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 yeah. Yes. yeah and and of course the megno hive uh being and the habits. intelligent entity that it is uh they custom tailor their their drones mm -hmm. to exist in these different biospheres yeah, they, they're yeah, adaptable so they, they, adapt they, they, adapt, quickly, yeah. they adapt quickly to these yeah, different yeah, these yeah. different places a nice so, picture of what zedon started as with the whole axiom before it was destroyed yeah so the so yeah we, we don't spend our entire uh life our story it, it, yeah our entire story does not take place in the desert no yeah it we just will starts we there. will move on eventually yeah but we have to get through season one first and we can't do that without your guys help yeah Man, so, this guy's becoming please. a plug master to, yeah. like i love it angel.com forward slash axiom <laughs> and express interest oh, yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Guys, there it is there's our folks look at those guys yeah oh, express some interest there it is beautiful good stuff all right oh, what's another one oh, what? Utilize cyborgs. Clearly, Rake ah. has demonstrated a potential flaw in his plan. In this plan, yeah. So, so why, so why oh. does Mechnohive utilize cyborgs? Mm -hmm. Well, they utilize all of the organics as their laborers, mm -hmm. uh, and the cyborg class struck a different deal. They are a group of organics who struck a different deal with the Mechnohive. Uh, they serve as the police force that oversees the organics. Uh, the Mechno Hive seems to see some advantage to uh, patrolling the organics in their prison camps uh, by using relatable organic-based uh, officers. Yeah. Um, they also, uh, you know, the organics as a whole, are, they just want to survive. They're trying to survive. And some people will do whatever they can to survive. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, some of them will even uh, give up an arm or a leg yeah. to well, survive. Yeah. And, and, in a, in, and I'm sure the Mechno Hive has promised them an ounce of power in that. In, uh, in quote unquote, freedom. Yeah. Freedom. Yeah. Yeah. Freedom's a yeah. big part of it. So, so that's, that's part of it, definitely. Yeah. There's, um, a, there's a bigger, grandiose reason as well that's very tied into like the deep history of the lore of this great war that happens of certain characters i won't go into them mm -hmm. don't say who i won't yeah. say who but say what geez. they they the cyborgs are a bit of an echo of what they are and mm -hmm. they they are almost a second chance for the hive to try to do something pretty devious mm -hmm. uh that they they once try they 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 had the hubris once that they've fallen from mm -hmm. Um, and the cyborgs are kind of the the second chance at that yeah but the mechno the mechno hive uh they're their, one of their highest directives is to be organic, yeah. is to be, for lack of a better term, yeah, human. Right. Because I don't know if our people are humans. They're, yeah, they're human all types shaped, of things. But they're humanoids. from other planets. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. they're humanoid. humanoid. Yeah. Um, and the cyborgs represent an experiment in mm -hmm. can we in, inhabit these organics but still enforce our own will. Right. So Because one thing... One one kryptonite that the the Mechno Hive has, they hunt the Axiom. They yeah. need the Axiom. Yeah. Mm. It is a power source that is unlike any other on this planet. But they cannot touch it. Ooh. they were created by the Axiom. Yeah. I love that. Ooh, there I it is. That. Look at that. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> but yeah, they can't touch the Axiom, and organics can. They have no qualms handling 
this crystal mm. that was organic itself. Yeah, that's the most basic, basic, that's a, it's like a, it's a, a, a cornerstone of our story yeah. is yeah. that. It's why uh, they keep the organics around. Yeah, because right? organics can handle the axiom crystals and the, the mechnohive cannot. Yeah. It will zap them and fry them and, right. it's and short powerful. circuit them. Yeah. They have to process it. They have to like kind of, yeah, distill its power for them to use. But its raw form yet is too powerful to, for any circuitry, anything like that. Scotty wasn't ready for that answer. Yeah. What's, yeah. Up? What's up, Scotty? <laughs> did we did we even answer that? I think we kind of did. I give out real Any other questions Sorry, here? We probably got time for a couple more. All right, Kevin. I love the world building. Examples uh, you guys named. What makes an interesting but realistic world? And your favorite shows, and how are you going to? Oh, so small. Just, Just so, so yeah. small. Read it out loud, will you? Yeah. Oh, it's even smaller there. Yeah, it's hard to love the this world one. building. There, there we is. go. There it is. Realistic. Realistic world in your favorite shows. How are you going to do that with Axiom? Mm -hmm. There are mm -hmm. there are some some things in a like in a um, aesthetic sense mm. with with just a world building um just in world building i should say uh like the 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 everyday life you know seeing evidence of like you know our organics things like that like what do they drink what do they eat we even had a question i think the first or second or maybe it was a comment something like that but it was something of dealing with food and i was like yeah that is a basic thing yeah. you know that we all have to deal with and it's something that you know that we do every day that's something I feel like in world building, you having these little mi that seem minute details, uh, like you know what what kind of food do they eat on Ac uh, on Z in yeah. Axiom? What are what are that? You know, one example is just that is Scarpathian yeah. husk beetles. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know the answer. <laughs> and, and then you know the cyborg class they eat their nutrition pucks. Get, you know, getting <laughs> up every day and, and, and taking taking a shower yeah, like our, like our, like our first episode like we have this yeah. you know scene where just, where Rick is like his, morning routine his right? morning routine yeah. where he's, he's sanitized like, he's a teenager <laughs> and like he's 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 not really wanting to get up out of bed I feel like that's relatable especially right. as a parent trying to get your kids up out of bed <laughs> yeah. to start the day like it's sin waking up Rick for his for his day but I also think like in life. Mm. This is, you know, whatever. But we're always kind of presented with things that maybe we don't necessarily want to do, but it's the right choice. And I think that those those themes are definitely in the axiom. Like, I mean, I feel like Rake is going to be presented with a whole husk of 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 things that he maybe doesn't feel like he is equipped or feel like he can't do but he knows that it's the right choice sure. and i think that like in life that's that's what we're constantly like presented with is like maybe this you don't feel equipped to do this maybe you don't feel like you are adequate in in this but are you going to make the right choice yeah. and it obviously it's, it's not taking down a whole horde of mechno hype <laughs> robots we can't yeah, but, we'll that, but in in your in your own life like it's gonna seem like it's taking down a whole horde. Of yeah. Mechno what is robots. what is that to you? What so, what is your me mechno hive? Yeah. In life. Yeah. Ooh, look at that. Oh man. Therapy. We We're just getting <laughs> down to the nitty gritty. Do we have any more questions? I think we probably have time for like one or two more. Maybe. Sorry, right. knock my water bottle over. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. I'm still pondering. What it might be on the it's bottom. Really good. Are we cut off? Or we can't. Oh, here it is. Do the TikTok channel. Totally yes. yeah, we do. In fact, we yeah. do. Yeah. I, I begrudgingly started one and then quickly <laughs> thank, thank you to the folks at Angel who took it from me. Yeah, <laughs> it was I didn't hero. know what I was doing. I was in over my head. It got on top of me. It was the hero's uh, journey of what is right and wrong. Yeah, yeah. that's right. <laughs> so, yeah, we do have a TikTok channel. I believe it's just Angel underscore or Angel, Angel Dash Chronicles. Uh, are, you mean Axiom? No, no, it's, 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 yeah, yeah, I was like, it's definitely not Angel, but Axiom. Yeah, I have been messing that up all night. Tonight, <laughs> no, you're good. Axiom underscore Chronicles? I think that, or Axiom dot. Oh, it's dot Chronicles, that's what it is. Yeah. Axiom dot Chronicles. Yes, we have a TikTok channel. Let's, you <laughs> should check that out. Just look up Axiom Chronicles, and you, it'll come up. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> we also have Facebook and Instagram. Yeah, that's, right. that's true. 
It's true. Yep, yep. And you can find Luke on LinkedIn. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, nice. Okay, we got to wrap this up. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. Uh, and we hope that you'll be a part of this project. Remember, you can go to angel.com forward slash action. I got it this time. We did. To express interest. Be sure to be caught up on all the latest project updates by following us on the socials. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, on Instagram, YouTube, YouTube and TikTok. TikTok yeah. as well, folks. Yep. Thanks to uh, Dylan and Angel. <laughs> uh, along with expressing interest, if you are excited about this show, please spread the word by sharing it with your friends and yeah. family and reposting yourself on social media. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, Should we talk about maybe next week? Like what we're well, we're going to take a break, I think, from oh, oh, from doing okay. for a little bit. The yeah. next, the next episode, hopefully. Yeah. That, that I guess. Yeah. Whenever that. Is. Whenever that is. Yeah. Like we'll probably have some, hopefully, have some voice cast. Yeah. Is kind of what we're hoping to do. Yeah. Um, which will be if really, really, really yeah, cool. Lines up. Yeah. For schedules or not, that's that's the hope. If the so. stars align. Yeah. There we go. There we if go. the stars align. It'll be an evening of the stars. Oh, wow. <laughs> Look at you. All right, guys. So good. good night. See you guys. Thanks, everybody. I know what you're thinking. This doesn't look like it's going to end well. And you know what? You might be right. But I've been through a lot worse. Well, Maybe not this bad, but still pretty bad. My name is Rake. As a baby, the Mechnohive took me from my parents. I was raised in Power City by the cyborgs. They manipulated me into their own image, trained me as a weapon. They made me do terrible things. Eventually, I was ordered to gather organics to populate the Mechnohive's labor camps. Everything changed when I watched a driver bot tear a baby from its mother's arms, and then turn its whip on her. Awakening a voice inside me I'd never heard before. That voice told me to defend them. All of them. In that moment, I broke every rule I was taught to obey. I knew the hive would come after me, so I ran. They hunted me, but I made it out. It's been a crazy ride to get to this point. I've made great friends, I've found my family, and most importantly, I've been called to my true purpose. If you told the old me that it would be my job to free the organics and save the planet, I would have laughed in your face and probably arrested you. But now I know, it has always been my fate. <laughs>